Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do it, man. Burger. We'll do the burger. Yeah. Look, Look at that. Rare is that. pretty awesome. Man. And I like it with no ketchup because you can really taste the meat. Okay. I have a good bite, man. Mm. Is your name, hey, is your name Frank? <laughs> oh, dude, Frank. <laughs> my name's Frank. Oh, Franks? I'm Frank. I'm Frank. 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 My father's Frank. His father's Frank. Yeah, everybody. My grandfather's Frank. I'm flanked by the Franks. The two Franks. You know, the Franks, they're everywhere. You know, like Kaiser Zose? Kaiser Zose, it was everywhere. This is Frank, and I'm Frank. Eat to taste good! <laughs> you should come to a place called Frankie's. That's the restaurant that me and him own. If they don't know the Franks themselves, they know the Franks restaurants. I mean, they have become such an institution in New York. If I sucked as a chef, and people are gonna be like, hey, you're a nice guy, but the food sucked. I definitely want to be part of the conversation, and a big part of that is just being in the room with the conversation going on. All right. I would say that most chefs that attend symposia or conferences run restaurants that are shooting for Michelin stars or are doing tasting menus. And what the Franks do is basically aim to make the best neighborhood restaurant you could possibly imagine. It's very strange what they do. Because, yeah, you, you see that they go from the most important restaurant in the world, and then they come in Brooklyn and they stay the same way that they were 10 years ago. I'll see you uh, coming tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. We go to all these great places. We get to eat the best food. When the five pastas come, you're going to cry. <laughs> we meet great people. We're out there having a good time, we're entertaining. MC Hammer, man. You haven't really like got, got down on any of our parties. Yeah. All hell breaking news. All hell breaking news. That's what being Frank's about. <laughs> Be Frank. Yeah. That's awesome. Perfect. OK. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao. Let's get the cops to do it, man. <laughs> hey, you guys want an eggplant? Frankie's Puntino, first place we opened, 2004. Simple, humble neighborhood. Southern Italian inspired food. They do Italian, open every day, well priced, like a barpini kind of feel, but nothing was like that out here. And I realized that a lot of people ate Italian food. What was the original caption phrase? It's a, a fresh approach. No, a, a, yeah. A lighter touch. A, fresh no, a, 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 a light, a light, light fresh food. approach to Delicious, nutritious Italian food. <laughs> and it's light on the portfolio. Light on the portfolio. <laughs> light on the wallet. Yeah, that's a good one. And we also own and operate Prime Eats on Court Street. German-inspired garden to guests, farm to table, whatever you want to call it. John the Hooker. American family restaurant. The allure for what the Franks do with the original Frankie's and also Prime Meats is that you can go there, you can have a great time, you can have a couple of bottles of wine. You don't go there to sort of have this hyper-labored over menu, you go there to eat fantastically simple food. Hey, what's happening, man? Hi. Javier. Javier. Cool, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Hi. Nice to meet you. There is certainly a tour in New York where chefs go from place to place, and there are certain pilgrimage places, and I think Places like the Franks are part of that tour because you know you're going to get a great audience with them and they're going to be there and they're going to be great hosts. But also, like, you're going to have the best BLT that you've ever had. We've been in the restaurant business for 30 fucking years. How do you make yourself relevant? You do what you do best. You're your host. Your hospitality. Dude, I'm so glad you came here. I'm really, really, really glad you came here. Man. In our trade, the more of the sort of communal spirit we can have amongst each other as cooks and restaurants as opposed to the old-fashioned competition, the better. So we just got some oysters to start. You hear the name, everybody knows about the Franks. There's a certain sort of sense of, I don't know, positivity. They're very cool people, huh? extremely cool people. They've helped out tremendously. We've accumulated all this experience and accumulated all these people, you know. So now we know all the chefs, all, you know, all these guys, whatever. And we've been around and we went to the symposium stuff. It's like, 
Now what are you going to do with those relationships? There's going to be opportunities for us to cook with people from all over the world and do artistic collaborations. There's always like things on the stove, you know, back burner, but you know, you never know when it's going to actually come to fruition. You know, the beauty of it is, is that we got enough money together to buy a building and what we're doing with it is, is using it to create a, an artist residence, a chef artist residence. Oh shit, what was that? Yeah, I don't even think it's a restaurant space. You can have a residency at that place, I guess. That's cool, it's cool. You buy a building, this is what you get, man. <laughs> you don't get much, man, but when you put a little, what you put into it, is what makes it happen. I mean, Frankie's was worse looking than this. We gotta get the tent, we gotta set up the kitchen, we gotta do the floor in there. That's the kitchen. This is it, man. Is it completely built out to be a restaurant? Uh, <laughs> it's raw. You know, the space is a raw space, but somehow, magically, at night, it becomes a very magical spot. Contra Mar is coming to cook with us tonight with Swallow Magazine to present the Mexican issue. Swallow Magazine is a New York-based food and travel magazine that sort of defines itself by being sort of the least food-filled food magazine out there. For the purposes of the Mexico City issue, we did a launch party over at Res, which is the Frank's communal residency space for chefs. I think the chefs love it because it's like really challenging. It's like a test, you know, it's like, here you go. Guess what, we got 150 people coming out for dinner and you got a couple of fold-up tables and an oil barrel for a grill. Make it happen. In order to really get the Mexico City theme across, he brought Jair. Jair, and he brought- Jair Tellez and Gabriela from Conchomar and Media Toro. They have two restaurants down there. They came out to cook for the event, which was just pretty remarkable. Jaya's food, especially what was served that night, I mean, you can really single it out as being really bright, a lot of raw fish, a lot of sharp either citric taste or fermented, you know, acidic tastes. Contramar's specialty dish, and which they're sort of most well known for and I think have been copied around the world, is the uh, tostada de atun, which is the tuna tostada. Gabriela and Jaya sort of smuggled a sort of mass amount of small tostadas with them. It's effectively just a raw piece of tuna that has been marinated in soy sauce with a chipotle mayonnaise and fried leeks. What Nobu did for Black Cod, Contramar has done with these tostadas here too, and it's one of those dishes, it just sort of works. Jair is the classic bone vivant, super talented chef. Loves life, loves his family, loves food. And he loves us too. He loves us. Does it look like it's supposed to look? Frank, 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 please, this is not guacamole. Don't do that. Yeah, one separate. Please, Frank, behave. You know, tocada, avocado, por favor. Yo, I did the same amount as you. What are you talking about, man? Ladies and gentlemen, how are you? This is what you were talking about. Yeah, this is res. Fantastic. Both of the Franks had sort of asked if they could invite certain people that they knew. It was pretty remarkable, the sort of breadth or the depth of their connection. We invited Martha Stewart to our party, which is fairly entertaining. But as soon as Martha showed up, everyone sort of collectively lost their shit and was Instagramming. But Frank was totally unfazed. Hey Martha, am I, am I, am I raking this grass in between the cracks right? I know you probably have a special technique. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I figured Renee Redzepi would make a salad out of that pull, shit. I would pull that out. You would pull, okay. <laughs> Fuck it. The mezcal is flowing. Okay. Martha Stewart hung and out like for five courses. That was shit. big. This event is like sick. The, tra the transactional aspect is not dominating. Yeah, yeah exactly. In a pop up, it dominates. Exactly. <laughs> This is the office. Let's do the calendar, man. So what do you think about Berlin? There's no way we can make it, man. We'll yeah, but they, she, she said when she was here, put those dates aside. And I told her, confirm them, she confirm never, them. She never said that in September. She oh, I said, is it going to overlap with Peru? Yes. Or Colombia? Yes. And you did the same thing you said, that 
Exactly. He, like, he, like, laughed, smirked, and said, hee, 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 hoo, What do you want to do? Um, I don't know. Exactly. That's, what, know. that's, I, what, I, that's actually what happened last no, time. No, it's not what it, <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> so it's what not. do we want to do? Dude, that's, that's September 2012. Oh, shit. That's... <laughs> Where the fuck is September 2013, man? Some, somebody fucked around with the calendar, man. Nobody fucked around with the calendar, dude. A just wave all. Just admit, you weren't looking at the calendar. No, I no was, man. Let's start this. Let's do this all over again, man. This is being frank. <laughs> we used to not write anything down. No. We, we would, we ran, we would, we, we would like literally like run a whole year schedule without in, picking up a in, pencil in our heads so we'd be like all right we're doing this we're doing this we're doing i mean at least for the first five five years there's a phenomenon known as being franked here in the company and that's basically when they might be having some disagreement about usually something really stupid about the color of the paint for the walls or whatever it is it puts everyone in a really awkward position but it works they work together and you know even if they're disagreeing it, it still drives the creativity of the, <laughs> of the company. You know, they're a little distracted and they have a lot going on. We start going one place and then we detour to another place and then we start going to another place and we detour to another place. Well, that's our life is a detour, man. <laughs> we're gonna go to our old neighborhood. We could drop it on my parents, that'd be hilarious. We're gonna hang out because the, the chef is hard. We came for dinner. What do you call that exactly? You call that burnt chicken. Okay. That's what he likes. Oh, your green, your, be your green beans are brown beans. <laughs> no. Oh no, I would be we kill each other. <laughs> Tara told me to tell you. What? To go? Because she's been to, to Thailand. She's been to Thailand. Yeah. Be very careful of what you eat, and above all, what? of what the water. The water. Be very careful. We she were just. <laughs> some parts of that are filthy. Drive slowly. Who's driving, Frank? Yeah. He drives good, right? He's an excellent driver. Thanks, Frank. We'll see ya. We're driving slow. Okay, this is a Roman Catholic cemetery. Falsinelli's here. Yeah, and my family's the Leos are here. My brother's here. Say a little prayer for my family here. I like the cemetery, man. Everybody loves the cemetery tour. I know, that was weird. I was like, why, we, why did I just drive us to the cemetery? You know, that was, was like... And then we went to Duraso's. We went to see Jerry. Well, we saw Duraso. This is kind of where it all began, man, for me as a cook. Right here, 30 years ago. Family's still running the place, man. These streets, up and down here, 87th, 235th. This was all my paper out, my first job. That's right, I worked for the New York Daily News. And that's where we used to play hockey. This was a hockey rink, man. First memory of I have with Frank was on the hockey field. But a hockey field in Queens was basically a schoolyard. You know, fully decked out. You know, he's an Islander fan, so he had like Islander, 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 everything. Growing up in Queens Village, he was a couple blocks away. So I knew his brother from, from school and stuff. Both went to the same high school. Born and raised here in New York. Frank's father was a police officer, retired police officer. My father was a transit worker. The civil servants as parents, civil servants as grandparents, you know. We're seeing everything from growing up in working class up. I was working at a local delicatessen. One guy from that deli applied to Culinary Institute of America, and I was like, fuck, man, if that guy can go, I can go. I applied, I got accepted. I went to CIA, did my internship at Maxine's in Paris. It was, you know, brand new French restaurant that Pierre Cardin just opened on 61st in Madison. You had, like, just graduated the CIA. I was like, what are you doing, man? He's like, I'm working at Maxine's now. And I was like, oh, man, I want to work at Maxine's, man. I want to get the fuck out of here. I want to get the fuck out of here, too. I want to work in a real, real restaurant. I went to France, and I worked with Paul Bocuse. He's the father of Nouvelle Cuisine. He's the chef of the century. I flew to Paris. I didn't even speak French. I had like an Asimil book of French phrases, you know? I'm like a camping, basically. And I had like $1,000 that I saved up. I had a stack of resumes and letters and recommendations. I finally made it all the way down to Lyon by bike. I'm riding to Bocuse. I'm like, I'm gonna do Bocuse, you know? What the fuck? Give it a shot. And I'm like on this little road and this fucking Mercedes Benz like, whoops past me. I look 
I see the white chef coat, and I walk inside, and I see the guy, and he calls me over, and he goes, were you just riding your bike? And I was like, yeah. He goes, nice, man. He goes, so what do you got, man? I go, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a cook. He looks at my letters, and he's like, okay, be here tomorrow at 8.30. I was really dying to go to France. Studied in the, uh, in the southwest of France at André Dagan's Hotel de France and Dominic Toulouse's Jardin de l'Opera. I came back from that. I worked for, uh, for Charlie Palmer at the River Cafe. At that time, Charlie was leaving to open Oriole, so I was on the opening, uh, opening team at Oriole. If I, if I were to listen to my father <laughs> at that time, he's like, go to Italy, that's the real food. That's the real food. They don't... Poof. What do you eat over there? We both shun our own heritage and our own food that we grew up with because we thought that France was the way to go. And lo and behold, years later, opened an Italian restaurant. Never been more successful, never been happier. I think after the lasagna and the eggplant, there's not going to be any more need for food. I think people are going to be like, Ugh. By that time, we're hanging out. And we're going to be in the crowd, and we'll, we'll know, in case of emergency, break glass. Yeah. Like, if Alan Ducasse shows up, we'll have to do one more item. We are preparing for Jelena's tonight. Yes, we have about 80 Michelin stars coming to uh, our restaurant. This is a once-in-a-lifetime type of dinner, actually. It's pretty epic. We've never had that many stars in one location on one of our restaurants. As a matter of fact, what I was saying, there's only a few times in the world when you get all those guys in one place. I don't even know how it happened. They suddenly just became a part of it. You know, suddenly they were just in a group. It just happened. Who would think that Frank Falcelli and Frank Castronero would be, you know, where would like Rene Redzepi, Daniel Ballou, like hanging out. And we're like, right in the middle, we're right in the middle of it. <laughs> it's sake, man. Oh, the olive oil business, that's a great story. Normally we come to Sicily for our olive oil harvest. It is definitely pleasurable, but we come to do business as well. This is our favorite restaurant in Sicily. If this guy opened in New York, we'd be out of fucking business, man. It's definitely one of those, you know, little treasure spots around the world and around Italy. 